right, welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. In front of a friend dropped off a car last night that's leaking coolant. In fact, it looks like there's a bit of a puddle on the road. Right there, you can see some moisture. It's maybe a little too dark for you to see. You can see that. Um, when they dropped it off yesterday, I didn't really see any leaks. I'm gonna just pull it into my driveway real quick behind my truck and then we'll put a pressure test on it. I'm gonna fill it up with just tap water and when we're done, if we have to replace something or assuming we are gonna drain it out again, uh, we'll just drain it out and refill it with antifreeze at the end. That way we're not wasting antifreeze because we're gonna have to drain it. It's nice and hot today, 96 degrees. That's pretty accurate, man. This thing has some torque. All right, let's find this leak. I just drove it like 50 feet so it didn't get too hot to open up that system all right so before we really get started here it looks like i just looked at it for like 30 seconds there's a lot of moisture around this hose right here the smaller one the what would be the lower hose i believe i believe that's the lower and um i'm just gonna go ahead and move this air pump out of the way i believe well, i'll just take this out of the way so i can look at that real well and then i'm gonna top this off and you know, it could also be that reservoir over there, but I, it looks like from where the coolant was underneath the car over there where it was parked, and right now that it's probably leaking from around here, so we'll start here. All right, so this is a pretty new car. I know they still have the temporary registration, so everything looks clean. Depends on who sold it to them. I don't know why they wouldn't clean the battery, but I mean, maybe because they didn't want the computer to say it was recently reset. That's a red flag, but I'll probably clean that for them because, you know, we got to take care of those batteries. Okay, this stuff should come off pretty easy. You want to be gentle because this plastic stuff will break easy. It's annoying. Yeah, it's a Chevy Cruze, I believe. A little base model car. All right. So it's just, this, this, this is the kind of stuff that after five years is impossible to touch without it just cracking to death. So I'm guessing it's not quite that old yet. Okay, got this unplugged already. And looks like we're just a uh, 12 millimeter there and probably about the same here. What drives me crazy is when people use different manufacturers use different sizes on the same piece. Ooh, that one looks like it's gonna be real hard to get a socket on. What the? I'll show you what I'm talking about, but it's right up against, it's right up against a bracket on one side. So it may only come out with a wrench. Then, and if that's the case, I may not even bother with this thing, but I'll see what I can do real quick. Okay, now that the sun has actually hit right there, I can see coolant. Uh, I'm guessing that's thermostat housing up there, but I also see one of these temporary, not temporary, these like adjustable hose clamps here. So I'm gonna just check the um, clampiness of that. These have to be very adjusted after a while, but it could very well be this joint right here. I believe that's probably thermostat back there. So I think we're gonna band in working on that side for right now. We definitely have a leak here. What led me to it actually was just these two drips right here. I saw those were paid. Nothing, we didn't do anything wrong taking this stuff off over here because it connects right over to where we're working. So I would have taken off this hose anyways. The bigger one on top probably didn't have to come off, but one of those things I'm not really mad about because I'm still just in the diagnosing process here. So uh, before I unplug too much more stuff, I may just unhook this battery since I'm gonna clean it anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. It's got plenty of oxidation on there. so. I've seen instances where people said, hey, my stuff was working, I worked on something, plugged it back in, and then the sensor got a bad code or whatever, and we tested the sensor and it was burned out. <laughs> so you just wanna be careful um, plugging sensors back in mostly whenever the battery's still connected, burn something out. At least they make this these cheaper base model cars. They're usually base model, so they're usually a bit easier to work on. They have a bit more space, smaller engines, so that's nice. Okay, I uh, don't know if we're gonna want to remove that because it's bracketed into the block here. And uh, we should be able to work with that thermostat right here. So, time to get some pliers. My fingers aren't gonna be quite strong enough to finish the rest of these clamps. All right, which one is it working on? There, just like that, tuck them out of the way gently. No need to take that off. So it should slide out. First, and then pinch down. Yep, 
There we go. Let's get that out of the way. And so here, I'll show you a better look at what exactly we're dealing with. Let me take off one last deal right here. It's this little bracket for those sensors. Here's what we're looking at, leak coming from around this area. It's either gonna be this hose or probably right here. Based off of where it's at, I mean, it definitely could have sprayed forward under pressure, but usually a small enough leak like this doesn't, isn't typically spraying, it's um, just dripping. So we suppose that, I heard something tingling, but it might've just been this wire connector down there. Touching something, let's see. moving cool in that radiator okay well I'm fairly certain that it's from here this thermostat but there's this might be a heater pipe behind there it's an aluminum pipe so but I think we should get the thermostat out of the way first and take a look at that let's drain this radiator put a pan under here and drain it out because we're gonna be opening up the system all right well I was just draining this I figured this was the easiest way right through that hole so I'm just kind of aiming the hose down to my coolant pan under there and but when I took it loose and it might not be very visible it looks like there's some stop leak stuff in there it looks like so just a bit of how that stuff builds up with gunk and so I thought mm, that's not a good sign but when I'm pouring it out it actually looks like it has oil in the coolant let's see if we can see any now and uh, I'm not even actually seeing any at the moment Anyways, I thought mm, maybe that looks like oil in that coolant. Might not be, but just something I figured I'd update you on. It's a little bit of a worry for me there. Okay, so there's that oil I was talking about. You can see where it just kind of sat up around that high level. It's probably where about the coolant was last night. I'm gonna get a new thermostat or at least gasket. This gasket shot. That's definitely where it was leaking from. And it's a rubber gasket, so I'm just gonna go ahead and order one of those. But that bit of the oil on the coolant's a little concerning to me. Uh, you can see it kind of sitting in the thermostat housing there on the edges as well. Is it significant? Has this been sitting for a long time? I just don't know, that's what's concerning, but I will uh, make note of all this, to say the least. All right, so here we are one gasket later. Just ran over to the auto parts store. And here's our gasket. Nice easy solution here. The thermostat's fine. It wasn't overheating, it just started leaking coolant. Uh, a little bit suspicious though with the amount of, again, that oil that's in there obviously. So hmm. what do you say about that? I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's gonna take a little bit more driving or uh, possibly, quite possibly, um, considering where she bought this from and taking it back and saying, yo, what's up with that oil and that coolant? So let me get a pick, take this gasket out and we'll slap that back in there and we'll be done here in just a second. I can't neglect you the satisfaction of removing a gasket with a pick. Wonderful. Right into the drain pan, that's nice. One, well, what do we say about that, people? That swollen gasket there. What did they use? Some sort of stop leak in here that swells up gaskets? Maybe. It's a little swollen here. Let me talk to the customer and see what they wanna do. I do have the thermostat with me though, because I get extra of stuff just in case. Since I'm at the auto parts store about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty 20 times a day. Okay, we'll see what we do. Okay, well, we're just gonna put this uh, old thermostat back in. I don't have any real concerns doing that other than that gasket's a little swollen, but might as well wait till that goes out rather than spend the 70 bucks now. Let's see what it'll do. Hmm, that oil still is a concern though. I just don't quite know what to think about all that. I just wanted to make sure that one would get started by itself first. Don't fall, buddy.
Entonces está Uh, se me complicó la vida. Wow, well, it's very hot. I was planning on replacing the blower motor in my wife's CRV after this because just not quite blown strong enough. And the cabin filter because I still haven't done that since when I got it for a couple years ago, rebuilt it. Okay, so time to hook everything back up and then we'll plug in the battery last. Like I already mentioned, you don't wanna be careless with that. Rarely anything happens, but when it does, it was 100% preventable, so. Just be careful. Yeah, and, and this hose clamp felt fine. That was my first clue when I took it off to say, hmm, it's probably not this hose for sure. But I was already suspecting that there was no gasket in there because I didn't see one, but it wasn't a paper gasket as you saw. It was an O-ring. So, new one in there, nice and thick. Shouldn't have any issues. In some cases, you can just tighten down the thermostat like that and get it to seal back up, but there's no sense in doing that. All right, so I, de I definitely looked at this container out of the corner of my eye a few times and never really noticed this definitely looks milkshakey right there and i popped the cap off real quick and that's definitely milkshake and that's a term for oil being in your coolant which is also a good sign that you have a bad head gasket or something else but usually a head gasket and that's very concerning so i'm going to talk to the owner about this vehicle again i think it's new or she has had it for a year and has temporary registration to pass emissions but i don't know I'll talk to her because I'll let you know at the end. We just got this in in case the GoPro overheated and you didn't see that. Everything's back together nice. We're going to put this tube on and we're going to fill up the system. The thermostat doesn't have an equalizer valve, so we're going to be careful about topping off this system completely, making sure that it gets all the way full. And that's scary to say the least. So I'm going to top this off and pop this GoPro in front of the camera because it is hot out here. Still drinking coolant, but I'm gonna go ahead and start it up to get that flowing, get those air pockets out of there. Nice thing about AutoZone too is they tell you exactly how much your service intervals are on my commercial account, but I do have the all data service estimator. So that may be what that's coming from, but it's nice to just pull that up and say, okay, have we absorbed that much coolant? No, we need more. Pretty cool. Okay, well, we're pretty much all the way warmed up. Uh, that fan will probably kick on any second. You can see how nasty that old coolant is that started to circulate up into my funnel. And there was just a little bit left in the system because I had that hose down past the radiator. So whatever nooks and crannies outside and out in, that's how nasty it's made it already. So, yeah, that, that's my main concern at this point. But I've said that before. Oh, that's what I was going to say. You didn't see me pressure test it because I didn't even use a kit. What I did was just put the cap back on, let it run until it got all the way up, and then check for leaks. Nothing's leaking, so that was it for sure. Um, all right, so that vehicle we looked at, that was actually yesterday. Um, she went back to the dealer. I gave her, I wrote up a nice detailed report and actually had some videos that we could uh, put together there with some evidence. Not that I wanna get involved in anything. I put my PO box as my address. Uh, but she just came back. She said that they have a 2015 Honda Civic. That was, it's a rebuilt title because it was in a crash recently. So I'm about to hop down at the computer here and look up the history on the vehicle. But I just got done doing a physical inspection out there and everything looks good except for, well, here's the report. They've got, we've got a few codes on here. Uh, this SRS, obviously it was in a crash. We've got two passenger, two driver seatbelt codes, and they've actually got new ones ordered, so they have have that in the contract right now. She's actually with a friend who is um, studying law or something like that. You can get yourself in trouble if you think you know too much, but he's at least going up there with her, and they did talk to an attorney, but she had signed a contract, basically, that excluded any sort of, it was an as-is purchase. So there we've got another code. This is the only one, oh, so we have a recirculation control motor circuit, and that's in two of these, which is also in the BCM. And then the yeah, electronic power steering system was the only one that was concerning to me, which said it had a problem in the system. That's the code, it literally just says it has a problem. So I give my opinion on the vehicle, it's gonna cost her $1,500 more than the vehicle she had bought two weeks ago. But it actually, I mean, the other vehicle had really low miles, like 13,000. That may have actually been a red flag. I didn't actually see how many were on the 
I didn't look at a vehicle history on that one either because I wasn't ready for all that when they came. This one, we're gonna make sure it's 96,000 miles, make sure that that's accurate. Everything looked good motor-wise, typical front end stuff where you just have a bunch of little stuff that's bent out of shape, but the hood closes nice and strong. So I told her, hey, if it's in your price range, uh, mechanically, I don't see anything that looks like it's gonna cause an issue other than that electronic power steering code. I have no idea what that's about. That's all I could tell her because that's all the code that there was for that. Everything else looked great. Uh, I didn't take the camera out there with me. It's actually really cold because it's been raining. That's it, that's the update. That's gonna be the end of the video. Uh, well, I guess I'll put down here whether she bought it or not. I'm assuming she will because she's gonna wanna get rid of that other car. And uh, yeah, we've got the uh, VIN number here, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. There we go. Oh, we've got mileage on here, 96,279. I couldn't find it on my scan tool on the data, but that looks just fine. So I'm just gonna double check that with uh, records, vehicle records, and make sure. You know, obviously when you get in a crash, they replace the radiator and the AC condenser. Uh, it could have overheated, because you know, obviously the front end was damaged enough to need to replace those. So you just kinda wanna be considerate of, okay, what situation was it crashed in? Does it turn off by itself? Probably it's a 2015 Honda Civic, but we'll see. Thanks for watching, that's the update. And uh, I'm sure she'll buy the car. If she doesn't, I'll say otherwise here in a little caption, but let's just assume, assume she buys the car. I've gotta get this other, this report emailed to her and then uh, the VIN information, the maintenance record. See you on the next episode. Also, just in case you didn't know, I'll put these links in the description. There's two government websites that you can get a lot of information from the VIN number from, and you don't have to pay for a Carfax or an auto check or something like that. Um, yeah, they're government owned because there's a certain stipulation where you have to have a certain amount of access to information on a vehicle, um, and they're not widely known. So those will be in the description if you're interested in those. That's where I get a lot of the information on the vehicles that I'm looking at. So yeah, it'll tell you. Wow, it has been purchased quite a few times. And uh, the last time it was purchased was two months ago for $13,925. And then it was crashed. That was the last time it was bought. Never mind. Job well done. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. If you want to help support the channel, buy me a cold drink, help me take my wife to dinner, consider donating at the links in the description. It'll keep these videos coming. It means a ton to me, especially your subscription and a nice positive comment really keeps me going. That's why I do this. But you'll get more videos. If people can help donate, you know, I don't have to spend so much time out here working. I can edit some more videos. So, uh, but you do you. If it, if it means something to you and it's valuable to you and you appreciate it, consider it. If not, a subscription means a ton to me for real. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next episode.